Hello. Um, so, yeah, welcome to our very last session as we have been on this 23 week journey of journeying with Joseph. This week we are just finishing Genesis. We're at Genesis 50 verses 22 to 26. Let me just read it to you. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up from this place. And so Joseph died at the age of 110 and after they embalmed him and he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. That is the end of Joseph's story and what a traumatic story and journey it's been at times. Almost a Hollywood blockbuster in scope and scale. Not only did this story lead to one of the famous musical, uh, I think it's Andrew Lloyd Webber, but also DreamWorks did make a movie called Joseph, King of Dreams as a follow up to the Prince of Egypt, which is excellent too. We have read in the life of Joseph of family betrayal and dysfunction. We've read of slavery. We've read of assault. We've read about people's lies and deceit. We have read of dreams. We have read of famine and pain and mourning and grief. We have also read about hope. We've also read about forgiveness. We've also read about reconciliation. We've also read about provision of God. We've read about restoration and we have read of faithfulness. We've read of love and we have read of joy. I wonder um, in Joseph's last days, what moments of his life stuck out in his mind? As we do get older, we do get more reflective. What stands out for him in his old age, I wonder? Is it the pain in his life or is it the joy? Which events that happened in his life became just another day to him and which days that we've talked about defined him? And the truth is, I won't know the answer to any of these questions, but I do wonder what he thought. With all the pain and the chaos that has been present in Joseph's life, it would be easy to let all these situations and betrayal define him in his old age. But it doesn't. We read of a Joseph enjoying time with his family, not just his brothers, but their children and their children's children, too. What a beautiful reminder for us. That we may be in a season of pain and suffering right now, but this will not last. And something that has been true for all of Joseph's life has been true since Joseph's time to today and has been true for every single one of us every single day of our lives. We have a God who is faithful to us, that God loves us no matter what happens, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God will always journey through us through these situations all the days of our lives. And the thing is, that means until these difficult days and situations are also no more. And that's the overriding sense that I get from Joseph in his final days and in these final verses. God was always with him. And Joseph knows this is true for him and he knows it will always be true for his for God's people. And that includes me and you. And then in the midst of these final verses, we get the promise of God spoken by Joseph, remind us of the same verse that was played out for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Just as God was faithful to them, God was faithful to Joseph. And through Joseph here, there's a re-promise of God to always remain faithful to his people, to bring them aid and to take them home again when required. I think the family must have felt that this was an odd thing to be promising at the time. Why would they need to go back home? Why would they need the aid and the provision of God? Because right now, at this period in time, Joe, God's people, Joseph's family, were being totally cared for in Egypt and wanted for nothing. Why would God need to deliver them from this place? 
Well, they didn't know what was to come after Joseph's death. God does, but the family members who heard this would not have known it. They would not have understood the need for the deliverance of God's people. God promises this to his people through Joseph and Joseph dies and is placed in a coffin in Egypt. And so Genesis ends. Genesis and Joseph's story ends with God's people being provided for in Egypt and God promising to come to their aid and take them home. In my Bible, Exodus just starts on the next page. And whilst it takes me less than a second to go from the end of Genesis to the start of Exodus, in reality, that length of time between the end of Genesis and the start of Exodus was 320 years. And in this time, in these 320 years, the situation for God's people changes. The favour of, of Pharaoh on Joseph's family is forgotten. Israel grows. The people become enslaved and they then are in need of deliverance. It's easy to start the book of Je um, Exodus and think everything is dreadful. But by going from Genesis to Exodus, we see that God has a plan. We see throughout Genesis that God never leaves his people. We see a God who is faithful and he will remain faithful to his people. And the promises given to Israel through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob and through Joseph, and they will be fulfilled. And in fact, that's what the book of Exodus is. It's the fulfillment of the promise given to God's people through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. Joseph's life ends with hope and faithfulness and for you today as we end this series please hear this no matter what season you're in remember these two things because this is what Joseph's life tells me there is hope and God is faithful